Madam Ambassador, Professor Seiler, thank you very much uh, for inviting me, me for this very special occasion. Um, like many others in here, I've been inspired by Gandhi, and, and I think it has influenced a whole lot of my, my, my work and my activities. And maybe here today I will mainly speak as an environmentalist. That since my, my high school days, I have been part of the environmental movement, active in a number of environmental organizations, and still find that, that uh, a field of work where, where a lot of things need to be done and where, where Gandhiji uh, does serve an important reference and, and role model. But before going to that, I'd like, just like to note that I think it's very good that these uh, this, uh, kind of uh, discussions are organized. Because for a couple of years, I think many have noted that it has become almost fashionable to criticize Gandhi. That from, from African critics, we hear, hear quotes of his racist language uh, towards Africans while he was there. In India, the Dalits movement is very critical of the, of the, of the Gandhi's um, sort of support or understanding to the caste system. And, and then from the feminist sections, we, we hear about the, uh, this uh, conduct with young women and so on. But nevertheless, I think, or especially because of the, of the sort of critical voices emerging, it's also important to, to, to uh, go with today's title, the truth, truth talk, that, that what is the, the sort of truthful essence of, of, of Gandhiji. And I think there's a lot, lot to, to discuss. So for the environment, uh, all those who are from Finland or know Finland, uh, the birth, birth of modern um, environmental movement in Finland is considered to be the Koyarvi uh, Satyagraha, we can say, uh, non-violent uh, action against draining uh, uh, an important lake for birds in 1979. And pretty much similar to the salt march, the you know, lakes as such were not really a big, I mean, it was one of the issues, but, but not really the, the issue, the same way the salt was not really a, a hardcore item of the, of the Indian uh, freedom struggle. But somehow this, this action uh, to prevent draining of the important lake for the birds galvanized the, the, especially the youth who, who wanted to have a change vis-a-vis uh, -vis environmental protection. And there, 100 uh, youngsters were arrested and sentenced uh, with fines. So it, in Finnish standards, it was, it was very big. And I think over there, what I've discussed, I was too young to participate, but um, what I've heard that you know, it was, there was hardly any reference to Gandhi. Uh, but then a, a good f a friend of mine from Sweden, Tord Björk, who is doing this uh, movement history, that he, he says that they actually it all, you know, this uh, civil disobedience for environmental con concerns came uh, from, from India and, and from, from the Gandhian tradition. And the link was through Norway that in 1969, uh, for the 100th uh, birth anniversary of, of Gandhiji, some uh, two scholars, RNS, founder of Eco-Philosophy, and Johan Galtung, founder of Peace Research, they toured India extensively. They had already written about Gandhi, and they were very familiar with, um, with the thought, but somehow this trip to India also uh, put them in an action mode that upon returning, they started to start um, this civil disobedience struggle against uh, another uh, dam on Mör, um, Mardöla River, uh, which had a huge, beautiful waterfall, and, and Norway in its modernization drive had decided to make a hydroelectric dam there. And so this professor Nes conducted civil disobedience classes in his philosophy uh, institute, and went along with others to, to, um, to the site and tried to prevent the works. And the very Gandhian method of not opposing the police, but also not uh, submitting to the police orders. So they were then dragged and, and sentenced with some fines and so on. So from this 1970 action of, 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 of Mardela, then this kind of phenomenon spread. There was a similar big one in, in Iceland and then eventually uh, to Finland also in, in 79. 
And the tradition continues. As we speak, there's an, an important struggle in Germany where, where people are, are trying to prevent uh, the coal, coal mine from extending and destroying an, an ancient forest near Cologne, the Ham, Hambacher Wald. Um, so, so this, I think this kind of understanding of history, the flow of ideas uh, is, is really important. Uh, and, and then when we do it truthfully, then we end up seeing how somebody who lived long ago, far away, like Gandhiji in India, has really made huge impact in the, on the European environmentalism. Well, secondly, I'd like to <coughs> say a few more words about this book, Hint Swaraj, uh, that we, we decided to translate that in 2004, when the 75th anniversary of the um, Salt March was approaching, we, we thought this should be translated on that occasion and made the usual requests for grants and publishers, but were not successful. And then we just decided that we go the movement way and we made out this, uh, this call that please translate one page each and so we can get it done. And it was done, done actually on those days in, in April and May when the Salt March had taken place uh, 75 years ago. And I first read this book when I was a conscientious objector in the 90s and then returned it thoroughly uh, during the translation process. And, and I would really recommend it to, to anybody who has not uh, yet read it. And with the sort of kind of warning that it's a, it's a strange book <laughs> because it's sort of outright uh, rejection of modern civilization, modernity. And, and in a very friendly, friendly, easy, easy language. And then also one could, should note the contradiction that while he is said that you know, press is, 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 is not very good, railways are not very good, and so on, but himself, when he was uh, at his work uh, for, the, for the freedom of the, of the oppressed people and, and the freedom of India, he you know, used them like anything. He always, if he went somewhere, he would start a printing press and, and travel by railroads. So it's not that he thought uh, rejecting modernity uh, as an idea uh, didn't make him in, into kind of recalls, I mean, go, go some ashram and just uh, be outside of it, but, but try to uh, work, make it better. And I think this, this is something you know, we should think of, that, that yes, we, we are living and very dependent on modern structures, but then might it be that there's some fundamental problems in it? And, and I think there the environment is, is again a key thing because next week there'll be again another report by the climate scientists saying that if we carry on like this, then this planet becomes very hostile to human species. I mean, life will continue and some species will flourish. But for humans, at least this uh, civilization is in trouble. So could it have been that Gandhiji saw it already this hundred and how many years, uh, 20 years back, um, that, that this, um, this kind of modern thinking uh, where his main critic is that the morals get uh, undermined, ethics are undermined, spirituality are undermined, that it uh, it, that it is a, it, one of the driving forces for this kind of uh, dysfunctional modernity, we could say, dependence on fossil fuels and, and dependence on, on monocultures and, and so on. So then to, to conclude, I would just say that I like this Gandhi's way is is important source of optimism uh, and hope in, in this, this area of era of, of, of environmental gloom, one couldn't even say. And, and some, some basic concepts from him like the, the, or his talisman, that if you don't know what to do, think of the, of the last person, uh, the poorest person, and then, then you know. So if we find they want to have uh, solutions to climate change or, or other environmental problem, that's one thing. Let's think how the poorest are coping. What, are, what, what is benefit, beneficial and necessary for the poorest? And not so that what is the, what, how we can carry on as a you know, well, well, well of classes uh, with minimal uh, changes. And then the concept of, of non-possession, aparigraha, if I'm correct, uh, very clear message to the, again, to the consumer society. You know, why should you stick to so many things uh, while, while good life actually might be with, with, uh, with, with less? 
And then this Swadeshi Kadi, that if you can produce things locally and with more handwork, then that's, that's the uh, right way to do it. And then, of course, the nonviolence uh, extending to also other species. I think what, what, what Gandhiji certainly had in mind, that it's just not violence among humans, but also humans and non-human species. So, so in a way, because so many people that this, these problems are so huge, you know, there's no way to solve them. But I think it's, it's not complicated. We just take advice. Uh, from some of the greatest uh, souls and thinkers and then go by them. Thank you. <laughs>